So hello world of the modern here and welcome to my review of the episode 22. A really heavy episode. Like I really watched it once before I did this, like once half time again. And I was like, I, I, was, I was tearing up a little during live reaction, but during the second time, it was just way sadder. That I was know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's just, it's felt, oh, oh, oh god. I'm still emotional. I'm trying to be like hype up beat now to not kind of cry. You know, but like you know, yeah, it was really, really sad. And it's like as I mentioned the second time I watched it, then I was like, wow, this is so sad. <sighs> I titled the Mona video the heavy monster, very, very heavy, right? Let's get to the elephant in the room. It basically seems that Ursula was trying to share it. But she was doing that, that the, like the spirits popping up of your body, right? Like get your um, your emotions to be alive. She was basically just taking your your life force, right? She was taking your magical life force to whatever empower something, and that is just, that is just really heavy. And it, it makes sense though, like story wise, well, it makes sense. But like how Croy is doing it, because Croy is doing it by you know, okay, I'm gonna like and he talks about it because Aku, because Aku's like. <gasps> What you're doing, Sans? He's like, uh, I'm evil, duh. That scene was pretty good. He's like, uh, I'm evil, like, oh, haven't you figured it out yet, you dumb girl? Okay, like, come on. I'm flying up here, laughing at people fighting. Yeah, I'm evil. It's like, and then she's like, after she's even like, obviously, no, you know I'm evil. I can reveal my dark plan to you. And it's like, yeah, when people are emotional, you can get a lot of energy. You can get like their whatever you know, emotional power. And it's very classic, you know, from the track Silver Trigger and so on. Like it's very, yeah, it's very like taking the like, like believing yourself, like power up in your heart and so on. And of course, earlier Ursula was like, believe in your heart that goes inside of you. The seventh word I was like, yeah. So. She's telling her about, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making people angry, and then I get their emotions, have the kind of weird app kind of playing, right? And so if that, if that works, and it seems to work, right, she's powering her evil role, whatever, this kind of makes sense that Ursula, when, I, when, she, when she told her about it, and the man, I was like, wait, is this real? So I was a shock to from the beginning, the first time I saw it. But afterwards, I was like, yeah, it actually makes complete sense, in the sense of how her power works, and actually, why wouldn't... Shanshara's power be kind of similar thing. She makes people happy and the emotion gets out of them and that's how she gets power because like she gets happy emotions and Croy gets like bad emotions. But so it is still the same kind of the result is kind of same same thing, right? So so it was very heavy there. I was talking, I mean, I'm emotional very it's very, very sad, and very emotional, right? Because Akko is like, oh, it's been my dream to always meet Chariot, to be happy, make people happy like Chariot. And then she finds out that Chariot only did it. I don't, I don't believe that, but like in her mind, in cross mind, this kind of like she only made people happy to stake their stuff right. And it's maybe there was something else, some memory alteration, so it's like clear there. Uh, but like in general, like it's like yeah, she she like she, she didn't want to make people happy. She just wanted to take their powers. Um, but I don't believe that in that sense though. Like a pro probably, Sherrod probably did it for you know the greater good, obviously. But I think that's probably what people made people anyway. But she was like. Let's make people happy and get the powers. Let's make people sad and get the powers. I guess, but but, but I mean, regardless, it's like uh, it's obviously very very horrible. And the first thing I was thinking right away was like, well, is this why Aku cannot fly? And that makes sense to me. That must be that. Like, oh god, that must be that, right? That's why Aku cannot fly because uh, yeah, like Sherry took her magic from her, like a, a big part of her like magic soul. <sighs> she was a kid, so she can't fly. And Diane even mentioned that last week. She was like, "It's weird you cannot fly, Echo." She was like, "That is fucking weird." Yeah, <laughs> like Diana mentioned, it, like you need it, you can't fly, but it's kind of weird that you cannot fly. You, you should if you train a lot. Like, why can't you ever fly? And of course, in this episode, we see that uh, Ursula or Charlotte, she cannot fly anymore since she got hit by that, like um, the how's it pronounced, uh, Vagandia, or whatever the tree is pronounced. That they pulled out the tree, right? It removes your flight and abilities, and. I guess they're using some kind of Vagandian similar magic then. Still, if it was magic, right? And if they do that, they cannot fly. Uh, I think that would be a big thing. So, it's probably uh, Shadow's fault that Aku cannot fly, right? Uh, I think that's I think that's a given uh, from that. It makes it even more sad. <laughs> yeah, and he's like training her to fly earlier and so on. And like that flashback was so emotional too. Like they do that flashback, right? Uh, and. Usually uh, I don't like like recap flashback. We need to recap all the episodes that we just seen because it wasn't that. But that was like a very good flashback because it showed it very rapidly 
It's like a lot of like 10, 20 screens of their, you know, relationship by how they're hurting her, meeting, befriending her, vaching together, become like a mother, you know, close figure for her, whatever, right? So, and it's like, you took my soul, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, you took her soul. It's like, this is kind of like your adoptive daughter kind of thing, and you rob her of her magic soul or whatever. And it's like, and of course, it's often using Nako to, you know, whatever, Triskel on the, the focus. Of course, I don't think. Shout is evil per se, but I think she was very rash there, whatever, whatever reason was, that we probably forget, we found next episode what it was. But still, that, that was like, that was, really, that was really. And they had to make it like really weird too, like last week, they had this kind of fight, they had this like a really tragic music in the background, and now they had this like, really tragic moment, and they have fireworks, they have freaking fireworks behind them exploding, and you're like, this is so weird, come on, Trigger, like, why, why do we have this like. Oh, you you pretty much took my soul when I was a kid. Uh, you you fucking bitch. And like this, this kind of scene and she's crying and having something fireworks next to them. Like obviously the fireworks are actually like whatever, they're rioting people. But still it looks like fireworks that like, you are celebrating and then standing there like, oh my god, you killed me when I was six, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, oh god, this is so weird. Like this makes it that I'm going to see Croy flying around there like hey, hey, hey. Oh yeah, I got you good! Like, this is flying around and being super evil, like, oh. And for that matter, I, I just had this brilliant theory that I think that uh, Croy probably cannot fly because of the Vagandian. Or maybe she lost her spirit or whatever to share it to something similar, you know, because maybe that actually was said last week, but I don't think it was. Like, but it feels like Croy probably cannot fly. That's why he uses those machines instead of actually a, uh, like a broom rat. He probably can't fly like a normal witch because whatever her and the machine Sharon did, either at the tree or later at like this flashback we're talking about. Um, and she does a flight power, probably. This is my, like, my again, back to this kind of thing, right? So, uh, but yeah, that was a super heavy, really tragic. And I was, I was definitely almost crying. The second time I watched it, anyway, it worked, actually. Like, the first time. Uh, I think that the first time in like, my life actually, I was just like a shock, right? It's like, wow. Uh, second time, Maria was just doing his review, just to you know, get my thoughts clear and just look at this again. I was like, wow, this is really sad, especially how they did this. Like, it's really good. It's a really, really good episode. Like, it's definitely better than 10 out of 10 freaking amazing episode because the episode start to is like super happy, right? The episode is like, oh yeah, let's go become friends, try to tell Akko that. That, that's a little cliche though, I, I, I predict that very clearly there. That she was like, I also predicted that she was gonna actually be the this episode. That was my main prediction actually. Uh, but anyway, I think it was very clear that when she was trying to tell Akko, I was like, Akko, I'm actually, I was like, hey Sayana, I was like, ah, come on. Like that, that is such a cliche thing there in the beginning, that doesn't really bad. It's kind of fun, and it was like, oh my god, of course, but they didn't show it later on. Uh, but otherwise, that episode was so damn fun in the beginning, like the episode was really fun in the beginning. Classic. The Timish Academia comedy, the, the, the physical comedy in the beginning, and then it was this extremely sad ending. Like, the last thing was super depressing, and then this thing is super depressing, but it was so weird. And this, this is a really amazing anime, right? A really amazing anime. How they can go from this kind of like really, really high point of comedy into these like these battles and this like really, really dramatic. Um, Ending right, super super sad ending. So anyway, let's talk about the the comedy then. Like this, this talk about the no, but I think it's like wow, that 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 revealed to me that that was super hard. That was super, that was super touching, and and they just made it freaking worse too. It's like everything is like oh, your idol actually took your soul when you were a kid. Your idol is actually your mentor, and she's been using you, and your your idol like kind of half ass. Mentor Kroos is actually you like your your enemy has to kill you right now and like man Akko is whew, her life is shit <laughs> right and that's why Akko is a good character because she is a really really struggling main character right from everything but especially this episode but I mean generally and you really feel like this is a relatable main character that has to deal with her you know struggles her her, her really getting up there right it's not like some kind of easy win for her. So she's a good character. She's a good character development. It's very, very interesting. I, I, I love to see that. I'm just going to end, but... Um, but yeah, that, that was really good. <laughs> then we had right, the comedy shortly here. Um, the thing... But that's the problem with the episode. The problem, sorry. That's the genius of this episode too. Like, the, the beginning, 
a little weak. You see some Andrew, you see some more, and this falls like, damn, forget about the witch boy. And he's like, but, but the witch is kind of like cute. And he's like, no. And they're talking about, you know, and it's mainly Croix's fault. He's like provoking them and so on, right? And then, of course, later on, he's oh, yeah, it's because their emotions, their anger, I can I, I can absorb it. Just like Shiny could absorb your happiness. I was like, yes, we had that kind of scene, right? But the thing is that Aku as Andrew at the bench, I freaking loved that. That was like, oh, that's so good. That is so good. That was really funny. The classic Little Witch Academia comedy and endless ship, right? Where she's like getting a hat and he's like, hey, here's your hat, my lady. And she's like, I don't need that hat. Why did you come there for? It's like, oh, I mean, not because I like it, but my hat back. And they had a classic, right? They're both kind of sundered around. It's like, I mean, I don't like you either. So I have to give you the hat because it's like, you know, I'm a proper gentleman. So I hate your hat. He's like, yeah, whatever. And then we see this kind of scene where she's like, I want to be like Shiny Chariot. Oh, will you laugh at me? And he's like, no, whatever. And then of course we have Andrew be like, no, I wouldn't laugh at you. I, I think your dream is admirable. I have, because he likes her that she's actually going against the norm. He's like, I, I like you, you, you yourself. And she's just kind of laughing, seeing just a kind of weird dance for him. And like, that that was so cute. That was amazing. How cute and uh, like, you know, the general nice comedy that scene was, right? It was really, really heartwarming. And of course, as I mentioned in the second time of the episode, that was even worse because after that, of course, you go into the scene and think about, oh God. But I, when I watched it the second time after I watched it to the full ride, I was like, oh my God. They're talking about her like, I'm going to be like Sherry to make people happy. He's like, oh my God, the Sherry's going to rob her of her soul in like five minutes from now. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, oh my God, this scene is hurtful. Oh, and uh, yeah, but the anime, yeah, and, like, that was like really, really good scene, especially if you look at the anime as a whole, right? And also the episode as a whole. Amazing episode, amazing episode. Words can't describe it. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna say emotional. And after that, of course, we see the classic physical comedy, right? Of Little Witch. She's trying to get the cubes, she's falling on the floor. Sue's still up there, like, what were you doing? And Susie's like, Pfft. Can we just pretend we don't know her? <laughs> the classic, like, I thought about it last week, but it, it, it is very clear though, and I don't trust me. That Susie and Lottie are very, very supportive. Right? Even Diana is like, quite supportive. Uh, like, they are definitely out of the anime pretty much right now in the end here. No, it's more it's about Croy and Ursula and Aku. The other characters are very, very little screen time. But still, the little screen time they had was pretty nice. There, but Susie is like, ugh, Aku. <laughs> it's like, oh, let's, Aku. <laughs> it's like, he's looking on the side, like, oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, she's pretty much like, you know, yeah, let's pretend we, we don't know, right? And he's like, let's move on. So I love that, like, oh, let's take the right path. Pretty much, and then they go up here, and then and we see Aki, like, this is the cube! This is the cube, girl! So they're like, okay, what's cube? And he's like, yeah, it's in my hand! And she runs away and falls on the ground, right? And it's just, this is the physical command is awesome point. And then we see the battle, right? And I like that it's a bit of 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 She's like, oh, Kuroi Sensei, this cube! And she's like, yeah, it's my cube! And she's like, Kuroi Sensei, the cube! Don't, don't touch it! It will hurt you, pretty much. Not say, but like, I'm paraphrasing, but pretty much. Tight. And you should feel like, come on, Aku, come on. Can't you see that she's just a typical arc evil person? She's like the typical stereotype of evil. She's flying over these rooftops, like laughing at people on the ground when they're fighting. Like, oh, you fight, you peasants, you know, like that kind of typical evil, right? And it's like it's flying, and the, and the evil things are flying to her, like calmly after her. And Aku's like, watch out, Sensei! It's like, no, 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 this is, that's clearly that she's controlling them, Aku. That's the only thing I would to on, but it's, it's, it's a little funny. It's somewhat, somewhat funny, but I think it's made that Aku is a little too stupid here, right? Whereas typical Shonen main hero, obviously it's very naive and stupid, but this is like, yeah, okay, come on, like, this is so obviously evil. Like, okay, a little easy for us as a viewer, from a meta perspective, have you seen the tropes of her being evil, right? We see like the meta, but still it's like, come on, <laughs> she's evil, she's really, really evil. At least in the sense of like, what she, whatever she's doing, her, her agenda really is, because she's like, oh, I'm doing this for my love for Chariot or whatever, but it's typically, stereotypical evil, right? It's like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, surprise effect of her, mm-hmm. But anyway, that's also a bad thing, but man, this episode. 
The feels for the end, super dramatic, really, really good. And I just think that having that scene after the scene with Andrew too, when he when he's like they are flirting with each other, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna make everyone happy. He's like, I believe in you, Akko, and oh god, oh that that was that was heavy. And again, I was uh, mentioned again, none of them iterating here or saying something again. But man, they're doing that scene. Akko is crying. And they have fireworks in the background. I was like, man, man, they're good at making these really weird emotional scenes in Tivish Academia. But yeah, this episode really shows to the heart. And this is an anime you know, you're not gonna forget, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the closest years of my life. It's just a really good anime. Easily the best anime of this season. Just so good. Um, like, uh, yeah, like all the other animes right now, like, My Hero is really good as well. I mean, I love My Hero, but. It still is a little too much to and right and the title is just like, man, that, that anime is getting confusing right, right, right now. Like, this is a shit, or this is an anime. I mean, this thing that really feels an anime too, like an anime, not a TV show. Right? Because, or, or manga, the other ones are done for like, you know, there's gonna be another 200 episodes of like My Hero or whatever right, in the future. They're, they're done for that kind of continuity. You really feel it, which is a classic, like one season, you know, like a full season, 26 episodes. You really feel this is, this is the damn that. This is yeah, the spring to summer anime. You really feel that this is, this is the anime, right, of a season. You really feel that. Like, uh, like for example, I was watching Yomashi Pedal, Coming Tomorrow. That is pr- that is definitely probably not going to end this season. Because even if anime will end, there's, there's no way they're going to finish the actual race, what they are currently doing. So you feel that they're kind of, they're the pacing, the season, whatever it is, so on. This anime, you really feel that it's every damn, it's on point, right? Every damn scene is necessary. I think this is just so good. This is just really, really good. And uh, I think that's what happened in this episode. It's anime. Like, it's definitely an anime torch, right? Um, more than a manga that's animated. I think that's extremely clear, this anime. It's an anime first and foremost, and not a manga, right? I think it's very, very clear here and the latest episodes here. And also why this anime is unfortunately going to end. Because, I mean, it's a really, really good anime. I don't want it to end, but something I want to say. Yeah, but at the same time, though, I mean, they have the kind of progressive, so they haven't... And that much choice, right? Uh, the anime isn't like some kind of, you know, ongoing stuff. Life anime. They actually have a really clear progression here. What makes it good as well, though. But the comedy this is so good to the comedy. I mean, they, they could make. An- I could see Trigger doing any comedy anime, right? There's really funny characters like Aku and so on. It would be hilarious. So I mean, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what they are gonna do in, in the future because it's really, really. This episode was like, man, best episode so far. Uh, extremely tragic episode, and last it was tragic as well. But this is like, wow, this is really tragic now. The ending there, like, oh my god, I hope they're gonna somehow you know redeem uh, Sheriff somehow. And actually, I, I will guess the, my last point here, before we get there, if I said, just said way earlier, uh, I think that uh, you know, I, I actually would imagine that uh, the last word is gonna be to redeem uh, Sheriff, things like forgiveness. More than redemption, like if 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 Aku can forgive Chariot, that might be the last word. I think that could be um, how how she's gonna get the last word probably, and why why Chariot could never truly forgive like Croy or something. She could never like get the seventh word. I think that's probably gonna be it now. Uh, if she can forgive, um, uh, yeah, Chariot's transgressions. That's probably how she get the last word, and and probably will be able to fly when she get Triskel on and so on. That's probably it. Uh, I should say that in the first minute, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that, that's that's the, that's my that's my main theory. Yeah. Anyway, see you guys and have a have a great day.